Alejandro and Nikhil, come on up, tell your story. Appreciate it. Uh, no. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alejandro Ellis. This is my boy, Nick Hilrora. <laughs> and we're the founders of Back to the Roots, an urban mushroom farm out of Oakland, California, <laughs> that grows gourmet mushrooms and mushroom kits on entirely recycled coffee grounds. <laughs> and what was so funny to us is that when we're still just getting started, we had all these people coming up to us telling us, oh, this is awesome. You guys are social entrepreneurs. You're starting a sustainable business. But we would step back and honestly be kind of intimidated by, by that because we had no idea what that meant. What was a social entrepreneur? You know, like, well, what was a sustainable business? What were the expectations? But now, as we've grown back to roots, I think we both feel we finally are starting to understand what it actually means to run a sustainable business. And we're excited to share what we've learned over the past year and a half with all of you over the next 10 minutes or so. But to kind of take a quick step back, we want to share a brief story of really where Back to the Roots came from. And it all really started off during our last semester at UC Berkeley when we were both sitting in a business ethics class. And Alex had an offer to go into investment banking, had an offer to go into consulting. Graduation's coming right around the corner. You kind of think you know what you're going to do after you graduate. But there we were in that class, and our professor brings up, and looking back now, a pretty random fact that he could potentially grow gourmet mushrooms on entirely recycled coffee grounds. And something about that idea kind of struck both of us, and that ability to grow food on what was waste. And the professor ended up linking both of us together, and we met up in Alex's fraternity and started brainstorming, researching, watching YouTube videos, reading articles online, and finally decided, all right, what the heck, let's give it a shot. Let's try to grow some of these. So it was right around spring break that we turned Alex's fraternity kitchen into a mini little science experiment. And finally, after a lot of work, finally grew one bucket of mushrooms on coffee grounds, literally that bucket of mushrooms. <laughs> and we took that one bucket over to our local Berkeley Whole Foods and just walked in, you know, a paint bucket of mushrooms and <laughs> went to the first guy we saw in the produce section, some guy just packing the vegetables and said, hey, we're trying to grow mushrooms on coffee grounds. <laughs> and he looks at us like, yeah, that's kind of cool, you know, but hey, go talk to him about it. And then we ended up getting passed back and forth throughout the whole store. And then a couple weeks later, though, we get an email from Randy DeCommon, who's the regional produce coordinator for Northern California Whole Foods. And it's this long, funny chain of emails. These people are like, oh, check out these two kids trying to go shrooms in Berkeley, and I mean, all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> but <laughs> luckily, Randy still gives us a call, and we end up chatting with him for something like 45 minutes, and he too becomes really passionate about this idea about growing food on what was waste. And he told us, if you guys figure this out, we will blow this up. And so there we were, two weeks before graduation, we had well, one bucket of mushrooms, <laughs> but we had the possibility of demand from Whole Foods. I asked really when we looked at each other and said, you know what, we have got to do this. And that's when we went from an investment banker and a consultant to, well, full-time urban mushroom farming. <laughs> and, <laughs> And we started, well, collecting some coffee grounds, building some racks, planting some mushrooms, and finally selling some mushrooms. And as we grew then, we actually came out with a new grow-to-home mushroom kit that lets families across the country grow their own mushrooms on recycled coffee grounds right out of the box, right out of their kitchen. And we launched that at that same one local Berkeley Whole Foods and have now selling it at over 300 Whole Foods nationwide. And... <laughs> 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 And through that growth, though, I think what we've really learned is that this sustainable business goes way beyond coffee. It goes way beyond mushrooms, and it goes beyond green. And we really learned that it's really about understanding that there is so much more value and interchange that can be added to that traditional linear business model that just starts with the supplier and then just ends with the customer. And we actually started seeing this firsthand, well, first with our supply, coffee ground waste. <laughs> and it was just so, I mean, it was so fascinating to us at the, at the time that Back to the Roots was making a business out of an entire industry's byproduct. And we really started to notice this as our waste collection route began to, to grow, as we went from one coffee shop 
to two coffee shops to now where we are today, collecting from 32 coffee shops every single morning, collecting 20,000 pounds per week. And keep in mind, this is, this is stuff that baristas hated to deal with. They had to pick this up and throw it in the wastebasket every single day. And we were actually going in there happily because this was our raw material. In our minds, we were actually getting this for free. But we really did become true waste collectors. And we were going out of the Pete's coffee shops every morning when waste management was going in. <laughs> and then that's when actually Pete's kind of came back to us and said, we're noticing that too. We're paying waste management. How about we pay you guys? And that's, they, what's interesting about this is that they actually said, let's do more than that too. You guys are doing more than waste management. And I, I mean, I do, I want to quickly pause here because this exemplifies exactly what Nikhil's talking about, about that constant interchange of value between partnerships. Because Pete's came back and said, how about we had a $2 off coupon for our coffee inside every one of the mushroom boxes that you sell nationwide? <laughs> so now our own customers were now being rewarded for making another industry more sustainable. And our customers were getting 20% off, a, I mean, coffee, a product that they already loved. And what's, I think, the coolest thing about this whole thing is that that actually brought up a natural discussion back with Pete's about the fact that, hey, we're actually sharing customers. What about putting the mushroom kit back in your coffee shops? <laughs> this is all happening right now, literally two days from today, yep. Monday morning at 6 a.m., all the coffee shops, all the Pete's coffee shops that we collect from are going to start carrying the mushroom kits. <laughs> we kind of stepped back and looked, looked at what's happened with this partnership, how this partnership has developed, how we've gone from first being stoked on picking up our raw material for free to actually realizing on both ends, both Pete's and us, that we're actually providing a service and there's, there's a fee for it and then actually rewarding our customers with a coupon, and then the very last step happening Monday morning, that there's actually going to be a sharing of an upside on upcycling. And I think what's so cool to us now is that we're starting to see these same types of unique collaborations and partnerships pop up in different parts of our business now too. For instance, when we started collecting all those coffee grounds, like Alex was talking about, literally thousands and thousands of pounds a week, we quickly realized that our own waste, our own byproduct, the spent coffee grounds after you've harvested mushrooms, those weren't going to go anywhere. But we knew we didn't want to just throw it away because that would be kind of doing the same thing the cafes were doing. So we said, all right, for now, let's just store it and let's pile it up in the back. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that pile grew and it grew and it grew. And let's just say finally it got to a point where our landlord wasn't too happy about it. <laughs> and so we kind of looked at each other and said, all right, we got to figure something out. So what do two naive entrepreneurs do that don't really know what to do? Well, we put it on Craigslist. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it was astonishing, though, because within two weeks, we had a two-month back order on our own waste. <laughs> and as these trucks started to come by every single morning, picking up our waste, Alex and I would literally run out with pen and paper in hand, just asking a ton of questions. You know, what are you doing with it? How are you using it? What are you growing on it? And it was so cool to start seeing this relationship develop where we had a waste stream that we didn't know what to do with it, didn't know much about it, but we had this community of urban gardeners, school gardens, nonprofit farms, picking up our waste and improving their soil with it, and they knew a ton about it. And they were literally giving us 30, 45 minute like, horticulture lessons behind their warehouse by the railroad tracks on composting and soil amendments. And along the way, as that relationship really started to grow, a lot of them were coming to us and saying, hey, you guys should support your business. You guys should try to sell some of this stuff. But we looked at each other and said, how do you even go about selling spent coffee grounds with mushroom roots? <laughs> but the cool thing was that those same people, the same community, were helping us out. They helped us out with the labeling, the packaging, the testing, the certification. And now, through the support of our own community, we've turned our own waste, which is coming <laughs> from waste, <laughs> into a retail premium soil amendment that's found in every single Whole Foods across Northern California. <laughs> and and the, I mean, these lessons that, that we 
started learning from, from our very own suppliers, our, our own community, something that Nick and I really wanted to apply to our retail partners, our customers, because at the end of the day, you cannot have a sustainable and profitable business if your customer can't find a product in your store, so in, in a retail store. So then we got very lucky with, with our main retail partner, Whole Foods, because for as we started growing our, our, our distribution of our mushroom kits, we were in store constantly, and this was throughout the country. I was on the East Coast, Nick Hill was on the West Coast, and we were demoing the product. You know, it's very unique, so you're out there explaining how in 10 days you get a full crop of mushrooms, and we're demoing out of the produce department. And all these different buyers from different departments started coming up to us. First, it was a floral department. Like, hey, this is a floral item too. Do you mind if we put this in my department? And then we had the, the whole body department saying, this is a really cool gift. Let's put it in my department. And then it was that natural fit with the Allegro coffee yeah. shops. So now we had four different departments in a retail store. There's 10 retail, there's 10 departments in Whole Foods, and four of them, seemingly unrelated departments that were now working together, they were cross-merchandising and cross-promoting a mushroom kit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what's taken our startup from one Berkeley Whole Foods into a national distribution in six months. And that's what's taken our business from two employees to 13. So it's taken us from a fraternity kitchen to a 1,200-square-foot warehouse to a new 10,000-square-foot facility out in West Oakland. It's what's put us on pace this year now to collect, divert, and reuse one million pounds of coffee grounds. And, but it's funny, though. It's funny, though, because when you're in school, you're taught that to grow your own business, you've got to constantly innovate to find ways to maximize your own value. But what we've learned through the growth of Back to the Roots is that to grow your own business, you've got to constantly innovate to find ways to maximize your partner's value. And that, to us, is sustainable business. And that, to us, is business 3.0. Maximize your, <laughs> maximizing your partner's value. I mean, it's, it's not a novel concept either. I mean, we've been hearing about this for, for ages. <laughs> and we actually see it every single day. We see it over and over and over again in nature. It happens all the time. And we want to end this short talk with a picture of a big rhino. <laughs> and this big rhino's biggest nuisance are actually ticks. And as you can see, the four birds up there, the oxpeckers, they're called oxpeckers. And their favorite food, well, happens to be <laughs> ticks. So the big rhino's getting all their, it's ticks eaten, and then these big ox, these little oxpeckers are eating away at the ticks as happy as can be. And they're just sitting there having this amazing relationship. And if that was it, if that was the entire thing, that would already be an awesome symbiotic partnership. But there's actually more. They actually add more value to each other in this partnership. Anytime there's danger for either of them, they actually warn each other. If the big rhino sees a bigger bird than the oxpecker, the big rhino actually protects it. And anytime the little oxpeckers, because they see farther away, anytime the oxpecker sees a bigger animal, the oxpecker actually flies up in the air and gives them the warning sign. All this just happens. There's no, obviously no sexual tension here whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens and it just works. And that's sustainability. And that's, that's business 3.0 right there. Thank, Thank you. you guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>